Hey everybody, so this is a hopefully quick video about the best emulator that I've found anyways. It's called Open Emu, uh, and I think it's only available for Mac as far as I know, which is kind of a bummer. Um, there are lots of emulators out there for all of the different systems, but what's nice about Open Emu is it's one emulator that's got a whole bunch of game engines in it and can emulate just about anything that can be emulated. Uh, if you don't know what emulation is, it's basically running games that were not, well, in this case anyways, um, we're talking about game emulators, and it's about running games on your computer that were not designed for your computer. So think about things that were designed for PlayStation 1, or Atari, or one of the Nintendos, or something else. And uh, Open Emu does an awesome job. So to find it, just Google Open Emu Download. The first thing that you'll find is this one right here. You can click download now. Now notice it says for Mac OS 10, 14, 4 or above. Now, personally, uh, by the way, this is through a remote desktop, so it's a little bit laggy looking, but I'm running 10.12.6. And so there are other versions, um, but they're just not available right here easily. So for instance, one of the versions that I found uh, just through doing a regular Google search um, was this right here 2.0.9 uh, I'll have to look and see which version I'm running but there are older versions uh, I just didn't find them readily available so in order to play a game like this you need the emulator and you need the game file those game files are called ROMs and uh, there's Downloading them is of questionable legality. Uh, I believe in the US, I believe, the law is that you're allowed to have one digital copy of any media that you have a physical copy of, I believe. And so, uh, to my understanding, like if you own a copy of Super Mario World as a cartridge, I believe you're allowed to have a ROM so long as you made it yourself. Uh, if you remember, a couple of years ago, a lot of companies came out with those mini consoles that would have a controller that was similar to the original one, and they might look like a Nintendo or a PlayStation or whatever, but they would be tiny. And those were basically mini computers running emulators. And what's funny about that is Nintendo is one of the most hardcore about uh, being anti-piracy. So much so that if they find someone offering a ROM, they'll sue them or whatever. But what's funny about that is on one of the Nintendo uh, mini consoles, it was found that the ROMs that they were using were ones that they had downloaded online and did not even create themselves. So it's just kind of a strange, odd, funny backstory with just a dumb thing, um, but frankly, nobody's making money off of Super Mario World anyway, so it would really be kind of nice if Nintendo would just back off and let people enjoy what they, what they you know, um, did in the past, but whatever. At any rate, um, the other thing you might be wondering is how you play it, because it's got to suck to play it with a keyboard or a mouse, and yes, I would agree, it would definitely suck, I've never even tried it. Um, but to play a game where you normally have a controller with like AB or ABXY and a D-pad, a directional pad, um, it, it would suck on a keyboard or on a keyboard and mouse. And so uh, personally, I use an Xbox 360, wired Xbox 360 controller. And if you type in Xbox 360 Mac driver, you can find them. They're available. Uh, this was one that I found. I don't know if this is what I've used. I think I used the same thing, but an older version. This is version 1.0 alpha, and the one that I've got, I think, is like version 0.4 or something like that. Like, it's not even a full version, and yet it works perfectly fine with Open Emu. And what's nice is with Open Emu, it allows you to remap the controller, and um, it's set up with a whole bunch of controllers that it, that it already knows, along with some generic ones. Now, uh, one thing I should have searched for here... Um, is just some generic controllers. So I have had Open Emu work with some controllers like this, like a regular generic uh, USB controller. You find a lot in uh, you know places like Walmart and Media Market and wherever that look pretty much like a PlayStation controller. 
and those generally work fine. Now, whether or not you can find drivers to use it on Mac or if it will work directly with Mac is another question, um, but certainly it works with other emulators and they work in a lot of the Windows emulators. Um, I think Satec was a company that made a bunch. Logitech is a company who's made a bunch. Those would probably work with Mac or with Logitech you could look to see anyways on their website if it has support for Mac. But you can find these as cheap as like $30. And you know, if you're looking to emulate something like, uh, you know, again, like, like Nintendo, there was only ever just a directional pad, A, B, and I think shoulder buttons. And then for Super Nintendo, they added X, Y. So you've got the D-pad, you've got the four buttons, you've got shoulder buttons, there's a start and a select, and everything else you just don't end up using. Usually on these, and uh, this is true with the Xbox 360 wired controller, the D-pad works, and also one of the joysticks will work as the D-pad. So if you prefer to use the joystick, for movement, you can. I don't, I use the D-pad, but it does work in Mac anyways. So uh, if you can't find a wired Xbox 360 controller, you can always try one of these generic ones, but I just personally prefer the 360 controller. Um, not only can I use it for actual computer games, but I have used it for a ton of emulators and actually have recently hooked it up to the uh, Show Me Android TV box that I bought and it works with that as well. The question is going to be, does it work with Mac? Does it work with Windows? Does it work with your system? And uh, I know that the Xbox 360 wired controller does. I don't know about the rest. But you can find them out there. They're cheap enough that even if you bought two or three and they didn't work and you ended up uh, you know, spending 100 bucks on ones that didn't work, you can use them for other things anyways. You can use them for you know, other games or other emulators. Um, I won't go into how to find ROMs. Because again, that's sort of questionable in terms of legality. I'll just say this, people who look for ROMs of games find them pretty easily using Google searches to my understanding. I wouldn't personally know. I only have copies of ones that I've paid for myself and have hard copies of. So I don't know, maybe look somewhere that has game ROMs. Um, there are lots of places that I've heard you can find lots of game ROMs. Sometimes you can even supposedly download disks or files that have hundreds or even thousands of ROMs all in one. Now, that brings up the question of if you're downloading stuff from sources that you don't know, is it possible for you to get viruses? Yep. Should you be careful? Probably. That stuff happens. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on that though. So let's say that you've downloaded OpenEMU. When you download it, you get this zip file. And let's say for a minute that these aren't there. When you get this zip file, double click it. And you'll see it unzips the application itself. And then what you'll want to do is simply drag it into the application folder and that will install it. And once you've dragged it into the application folder, which you can see I've already got it there, then you can delete the zip file itself. And I'm gonna delete this one because I already have it. But that's all it is to installing it, just like any other uh, Mac uh, software and when you go to open it the first time you might get a warning message or something like that it might give you a tutorial but this is basically what you'll see and it says drag and drop games here so uh, let me see here I've got one game that I did not download that I made my own legal copy of but before I get into that there's a whole bunch of stuff and what I would go to is preferences now you can change things like the filter so you can for instance, make it look kind of like you're playing on a CRT. You can change it um, to this linear filter and so on. Um, NTSC filter. I think NTSC is what it's set as standard. You can have it pixelate the screen. These are all filters that take a, like a flat screen or an LCD or your computer monitor and make it look like it originally looked when you were playing it back in the day on TV in 1995, right? Uh, so that's what a lot of those are for. Aside from that, uh, pause when in background, I think these are all set as standard. I don't think I change much of anything in here. Allow playing with controllers when in background. Okay, always launch game full screens might be something you want to check, but you might want to leave it the way it is. That's up to, to you. And then always use pop out gameplay window where when you select a game, it'll pop out instead of playing in the same window. That might be good for some people. Uh, if you go to library, it shows you where it saves the, the files. 
So mine is in Documents Emulators Game Library. You can change that, and I may have changed it. That might not be the default location, I'm not sure. Uh, and then it shows available libraries, and I've just got them all checked. Um, there are some caveats to that, though. And for instance, when we get to cores, you'll see some of these don't have cores. So um, famously, so like Super Nintendo has the SNES 9X core. That's a really good emulator that works well. If you wanted to use BSNES, you would have to download that and then put it into the appropriate folder. Uh, OpenEMU has, I think they have a wiki page where they tell you how to do that stuff. The other thing that you may need are BIOSes or system files. And famously, PlayStation 1 is one of them where you need to find the BIOSes in order to play the games. And I believe with PlayStation 1, you take the BIOS files and you drag and drop them onto uh, the OpenEMU window and then it will load them. But you can see there's a whole bunch of these things that don't have the BIOSes. I believe that comes down to um, patents, trademarks, copyright stuff, where the BIOS itself is copyrighted material. And so OpenEMU can't give that out freely, but if you find it, or if you have one, you can use that one that you have. And obviously I have a PlayStation 1. Not only uh, do I have the Japanese version, but also the American and the European version, which is why I have those three BIOSes and drag and drop them, and now I can play PlayStation games. But some of them don't need these system files, and just having the core will allow them to run, like is the case with the Nestopia core that allows you to play Nintendo games and Famicom games. Nintendo and Famicom are the same thing. So at any rate, that's what that stuff is about. If there's a system that you can't play, check their Wikipedia page, see if you need system files. You might need additional files on top of just the ROM. The other thing to know is some games are hard-coded for a different location. So, for instance, with PlayStation, I've got the ROM for Japan, America, and Europe. I can play games from anywhere. But if you have only a, an American, I'm sorry, not ROM, BIOS, if you have just the American BIOS, you could only play games that were ripped from American games because they're different in Japan um, and they're different in Europe. I think part of that is NTSC versus PAL, but it's more so a marketing and trademarking thing. Uh, a game might have one name in the U.S. and a different name in Japan because in Japan that name might already be being used for something different and because trademark laws differ and so on. Uh, the next big important thing here is controls. So there are controls for all of these different things and you've got to set some of them up. Now, when I plug in the Xbox 360 controller, it straight up just works. It's already set up. Uh, to work perfectly fine, at least with Super Nintendo. So up, down, left, right work because they're the D-pad. One of them that I might change is Select because it uses the right, uh, I think that's the right joystick actually. And I don't like that because Start Select allows you to um, close the, the board that you're on in Super Mario World. So I may change Select, but then A and B are set up to work um, and I think X and Y are set up to work. Oh no, this is Nintendo, that's why, sorry. What am I looking for? Super Nintendo. So yeah, up, down, left, right. Select, I need to change start. And there we are, yeah. So uh, A, B, X, Y, and then left, right are the, not the trigger buttons, I think the shoulder buttons. Because Super Nintendo had these four and the shoulder buttons. So it's pretty easy, and if you want to change one, you can. Because you can just click it and then change it. Um, I want to not do that. <laughs> uh, don't want to change anything. And then you can change it for different players as well. So if you have, uh, what was that set for, D or something? Anyways, I'll probably have to change that back. Um, you can set it for different players if you have more than one player playing the game. So once you've got OpenEMU on and set up and ready to work with whatever controller you've got, and you download a ROM, Basically, as you see, drag and drop games here. So we'll drag and drop it. Now I've got it in a separate folder, but I believe what that does is make a copy in here. It does, it makes a copy of the ROM in the location that it's needed. And then you can see it also automatically downloads the album art or the, the game art as well. So then if I had the controller plugged in, 
which I don't, you can just double click it and you can start playing it. Now there are some options here. For instance, you can change uh, the core. You can add cheat codes to it, which is kind of neat. You can change the filter as well to change to see. So that changed it to the CRT filter. Um, let me see, pixelate filter. And you can get it to, to, to look the way that you want it to look, to look the way that you remember it looking. Um, you can hit power just to turn it off and you can also pause it. So uh, the other thing, uh, I believe it will save your state if you just close it. I'm not certain about that. Let me see. Yeah, so, um, so when you just power it off and then you go to play that same game again, it says, would you like to continue your last game? Do you want to continue where uh, playing where you left off? So for games where, uh, let's say you're playing a game for a while, but you haven't saved it in a while, or you haven't gotten to a safe spot, you close it, go to open it back up, you can open it back up to the same exact spot where it was left off, even though you didn't save it, because the computer will save it in that specific spot, separate from the game ROM itself. But also you can save it just like you could back in the day for things like Super Mario World. When you hit the little exclamation boxes, it'll ask you if it wants to save. You can save it. And then you can do do not ask me again, yes or no, which I would do do not ask me again and yes. Now with this one, I didn't get anywhere with it. Um, but if I had, it would save it there. So like um, I think in Mortal Kombat, you would uh, fight all the bosses, uh, but maybe you get to a certain point. You don't want to stop necessarily. You want to keep going from that point, but you have to go eat. You can just hit power and then come back and have it open it right back up to where it was. You can see too, there's separate volume control. Volume's not working now because I'm through the remote desktop, but it does work. And it's just awesome because you can see all of the different systems that you can get games for, that it works for. And I think, honestly, I don't even think I have all of them shown here at the moment. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I do not. I think you can add extra ones as well. Let me check. Preferences. No, sorry, I do have all of the available libraries open up there. I could have sworn that there were more. But at any rate, um, yeah, is PlayStation showing there? It is, okay, it does. And as you can see here for PlayStation, it says disc-based games have special requirements. Please read Disc Importing Guide. And that specifically is about using those BIOS files. And so you can see they've got not a wiki, but a GitHub page that explains using BIOS files and what's supported and what's not. So uh, if you're into emulating older games or you think you would be into it or, you know, there's an older game that you just really want to play, you can probably find it. If you've got an Xbox 360 wired controller, that works, or even a cheap generic controller, that would work. And this OpenMU is really the best one that I've ever seen because in the past, when I did emulation personally, it was a different emulator for different systems, and they all had a different interface, and you had to set up the controller for each and every different one separately, and it wasn't unified. And with this, it's just so nicely unified. You can go from playing you know, River Raid on Atari to whatever on Game Boy, you know, to Tetris on Game Boy, to Super Mario 1, to Super Mario World, to Metal Gear Solid, right? Uh, all within this one unified interface, and it is just awesome. Which makes me sad, because I think it's only available for Mac. And Mac is terrible, because Apple sucks, but somebody did make a really good emulator for it. So anyways, that's all I got. Sorry for making this one long again, but uh, hopefully it helps somebody. Enjoy.